Welcome to the Jamil Rawl Show, and there's a little series I'm making, a little probably three-part series, um, titled Zoot Suiters, Pachucos, uh, Brown Berets, and Black Panthers. And this discussion is, is very heavily steeped in the Civil Rights era as well, which in the Chicano community started years before uh, the, the more, the more um, popular, I guess, you know, popular historically, the Black Civil Rights uh, process started. The Black Civil Rights process started way before the 60s, but it was, but it was, it became very famous in the 60s. But the Chicano community had their own struggle and their own battles, going more famously going back to the 30s. And Malcolm X was a zoot suitor, and I found that very interesting that the Chicano community at that time, the Mexican Americans living in the LA area, which was not nearly as affluent as it is today, a very much more smaller population. Uh, used the zoot suit style to, in, in a way to express themselves through their uh, turmoil, and so which they are going through uh, harshly. <laughs> and Ruben Salazar um, has come up on my radar. Um, Ruben Salazar unfortunately passed away in 1970. A lot of people, you know, said that this this obviously was an assassination at the L.A. Sheriff supposedly did at the Silver Dollar Cafe. And at that time in 1970, East L.A. was in major, major, major uh, uh, civil rights protest. Um, you had, you know, if you went down, if you were living in East L.A. back in 1970, you would have saw everybody out there protesting from gay rights activists to the to neo-Nazis <clears throat> to the Chicano American community, and you had the Brown Berets at that time, um, which found solidarity with the Black Panther Party, which is, there's been some historical pictures taken of that. Uh, now, it's funny because when a lot of people think of East L.A., they think of street gangs, um, like the movie Blood In, Blood Out. A lot of people don't know the famous tree in the movie Blood In, Blood Out that came from an area of East L.A. on a city terrace, and actually there's two East L.A.'s. You have a real city that's incorporated known as East LA. Then you have the greater area of East LA, which is made up of Boyle Heights, Whittier, again, City Terrace, Lincoln Heights, a lot of other cities. Um, that's what LA is, the city of cities. Uh, so now Ruben Salazar um, was a civil rights leader and he was a very outspoken, uh, educated man from East LA. And a lot of the people in 1970 were, you know, were in the LA, East LA area. A lot of these people came from street gangs. And I have to, I have to cross-reference that with other groups such as the Irish or the Italians that came out of uh, the East Coast in the early 1900s. Like, for instance, you have um, uh, Paolo Vacca... I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Paul, Paola, Paul, basically Paolo Vaccarelli who, of course, was a Sicilian immigrant, and he founded the Five Points uh, Five Points Gang. Now, he was known as Edward Kelly. Um, at that time and era, it was very, uh, you know, common for somebody outside of the Irish uh, heritage to take an Irish name if they were a boxer. So, uh, Paolo Baccarelli was Sicilian, but he took that name Edward Kelly because he was a boxer. And he started something known as the Five Points Gang in New York, and uh, he was known as being a mentor to uh, Lucky Luciano and El Capone, of all people, and a lot of people had never heard of Edward Kelly. <laughs> but so he started the Five Points Gang, and had it not been for the Five Points Gang, you probably never would have had a New York Police Department, at least not in that era. Uh, the Five Points Gang through Tammany Hall started the Fire Department and this began the New York Police Department. Um, so, in actuality, the gangs of New York founded New York. It was the gangs that were out there putting out fires and stuff for the city. And there's a tremendous history that's very rich <clears throat> dealing with early uh, 19, late 1800s and early 1900s uh, New York City. But the Chicano community, the reason why I bring this up, the Chicano community through street gangs in the East LA area, which was very political in 1970, cross references uh, Irish immigrants, Italian immigrants, anybody who first comes in to America, 
usually starts at the bottom and goes through that process. Now, going back to Ruben Salazar. Um, after high school, he served in the U.S. Army for two years. He went to college in Texas. Uh, he, he was an amazing uh, pillar in the Chicano community, you know. And it's noted that he, due, to his, um, due, to, due to his support of the Chicano movement, he became a target um, by the, the federal government. It's noted that the FBI, he became a target of the FBI, um, uh, such as Stokely Carmichael was, you know, and he ended up, unfortunately, he ended up, he ended up dead, but he left a legacy behind, and I want to, do we have time for this? This is just a small introduction, I just wanted to give some notes on, that was Ruben Salazar we were going over. Now the Zoot Suit Riots are really cool. The Zoot Suit. The Zoot Suit Riots were a series of conflicts during the wartime in Los Angeles uh, in, in, in June 3rd, June 8th, 1943. And the, the stereotypical outlook of somebody of Mexican heritage wearing a Zoot Suit was, you know, you were illiterate, you were uninformed. Uh, to the white society, you were a nuisance, but in reality, it was just a style. The zoot suit really did depict someone, one's character or, or one's even economic or social standing. It was just a style. The zoot suit was just a style. It was just a style. And I love going, uh, I had, I dated a girl for a long time, and she was from the L.A. area, the West End. Her, man, my God, her uncle was like the, the biggest, this is, this is when I was really young, this one, but her uncle was like the biggest, uh, uh, cholo gangster from the Mexican community you ever want to know. Even, even the police were afraid of him, you know, he was like, even when the police talked to him, he was respectful, but they would get out of the car like three or four cops at a time, just because he was so crazy, but uh, he used to tell me stories about like the 60s and 70s in LA, which was a far different time than it is today. Of course, things have changed a lot since the 60s and 70s, but usually I go into the, the Mar- Ooh, boy, this is going to get interesting. A lot of people, the Maravilla Project. A lot of people have never heard of the Maravilla projects, but that that's that's an area. These people were very instrumental. There was a lot of street gangs in 1970 who were very involved in the civil rights movement. I mean, respectfully involved. And they drifted out of the Maravilla projects of all places, which was notorious for for uh yeah, Maravilla handball court. You know. Maravilla projects was just as notorious as, as the White Fence or or a lot of the other groups living there. But in the future, I'm going to present something more in depth on them. It's going to take me some time because I just don't want to come online and just put out a bunch of information that you know I want to really discover something that's significant for the listener, and so. I'm gonna, it's going to take me a lot more reading the history of the Brown Braves in the East LA area. And a lot of this stuff appears to have been covered up. You don't see too much stuff on television. But, and that is uh, on the Jamil Rawls show.